Greetings, this is Brenda Selzano. I want to show you today how to sew up one of my little glamping campers that I'm going to use this not as a hot pad, but I'm going to make it into a zipper pouch. And I wanted to show you how they look. This is the regular size gl glamping campers, but I'm also now making them in little minis. This mini shows that this would be the outside and this would be the lining and I've chose a pink zipper. And of course, it comes with the extra awning stuff and a little um, hand tab. This one here is the regular size large one. It also has the liner. This one will have a dark zipper. And I always lay out my instructions on the side. And in this case, I ordered a material that is larger. When you get a fat quarter on a different fabric rather than cotton, this one came on cotton, so it just, you just get all that you see here. But this one here I got on, um, what did I get this on? This was on performance linen. So performance linen ends up with some extra. You just get an extra um, set of the instructions, and you could have extra material for extra straps so you can make a choice or whatever. And of course, this is the awning one here. That's for the awning. But anyway, that's the first step and I'll stop it here and the next step will be how to put it together. Step one, we're gonna take the tab or in this case, it's gonna be like a little handle for the glamper camper. And you're going to take, so there's no raw edges. You'll You'll fold it. You can iron this by just folding it in half so you know exactly where it is. Or you can just press with your fingers. And make it something like this. And then sew it up. The main thing is just to get it so you don't have raw edges and you just have this nice little handle thing. Now, I've never tried sewing this camper on this linen, but we'll see how it turns out. And I didn't iron it first, which I recommend that you do because it's a whole lot easier. You probably don't need to see me sew on it anyway, but I'll just sew, show you a little bit and then we'll go to the next step. I'm just folding both sides in, and then I fold them over again, and then sew it. And I don't know, you can't see up there, but I will show you when I get this done. Okay. And this is what it will look like. So that's the end of that step. The next step is to do your little curtains that you'll sew on the outside of each outer side of the camper. These are set right above the windows. So you'll have this little pleated kind of looking awning on each window that gives it a 3D look. And that's what it looks like. The first thing you do is just go around and turn under everything on the outside edge and sew that up. <clears throat> and then you'll, you're going to um, cut out each one. So that means there's some raw edges there and you'll have to fold those under for, uh, so those raw edges don't uh, show. Okay, I finished sewing up the little toppers on the windows. And they're, they're going to look similar to this. These were the two end ones. So you can see that there's where it's like the cut line there. <clears throat> However, there's one that came out sort of thin. So I'm going to fix that on the pattern. And because of that, see this edge hasn't been uh, turned under. With the um, performance linen. It frays a lot, so I do prefer to do these on the cotton. Um, I think the feel is really nice, and you, if you do this on the performance linen, you will want to um, do take extra 
steps to make sure that <clears throat> it's not fray, the frays aren't coming out on the side. One thing you could do on the black is you could touch up with a permanent marker or something if you didn't. Of course, this is done in a different thread. I have a, a gray thread, I believe, <clears throat> which you'd probably want to use the black if you're going to do this one. The black would look a lot nicer, but this helps show on the video the sewing process of it. And these are going to go... This is your little outside part. And what you're going to do is then you're going to fold these. Now, if you're only going to do one fold, you can take a better uh, hem in it, and then it would be a lot simpler. But I usually, I would do at least a, a little tri-fold. Something like this. It's like... And then you're going to just place that over the top of the window. And then you will either hand stitch or machine stitch all the way around that. Now, to make it look nice, kind of like quilting, you can sew clear around the window if you want. Because you're doing this before anything else is applied. So next I'm going to be applying these toppers on it, and I'll show you that next. Okay, this is what it's going to look like when you get them applied. This one here has the two. And I took the one thin one and I just made it a rolled under. And besides, these people here wanted to roll theirs down a little bit and this one's rolled up in the front living room. <laughs> anyway, there's how it would look. And I really like the 3D look of it. So those are done. On to the next game now. <clears throat> we put, put on the little window toppers. Now we're going to put one side, the outer side, and one liner and the zipper together. And this is a layer of three. So your first thing you're going to lay down on the table is your liner, the top on the top, and face up. And then face up, layer your zipper where you want it and place it wherever you want it on there. I usually try to place the zipper part more towards an edge because I can always cut off some of this part here. And then you're gonna want, let me repeat that, face up, face up, and then your outer one, you will face down. So that when you look at it, this is how it's gonna look. Here's the top of each piece. I have the, the outer, the zipper, and the liner. I always lay down the liner first, face up, zipper up, and the outer down. And now I will go across the zipper part. <clears throat> and as I get to either end, I will gradually, you can see how this sticks out a little bit. I will gradually, just a few stitches at a time, I'm going to bend that down so that it comes down a little bit on there so you can still you can see how that would then be tucked in and I'll slowly um, stitch along there and I'll do the same on the other end till it gets about to that halfway mark of your zipper and you may have to then clip the corners just a little bit on the lining and the, the outer <clears throat> on the inside of where it won't be shown but that's what I will do first and when I get this done, I'll show you how it looks. And then you'll just immediately do the same thing on the other uh, side and the other outer. And, and then on the zipper, you'll just flip it over. I'll show you that in a little bit. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to show you the step that I did now. You can see that this is uh, this is the liner piece. And you can see that that, that has sewn in there. Make sure to remember when you're doing a zipper, you always do it a little bit. You sew a little bit, then you open your zipper up, and then you finish the rest of it. So that this will be the outside, and this is the inside. So the next time you're going to do the same thing, I'm going to leave this pretty open, actually. The zipper, I'm going to leave that open. You're going to, again, do the same thing. Now you're doing the other side of the zipper. You did this side. So now you're going to do this side of sewing it down, but you're going to layer it the same way. You're going to layer the liner, the zipper, both face up, 
and then the outer facing down. And sew that up the same way as you did this, only it's just the opposite side. Okay, once the zipper is in, you'll have a liner side and you'll have the outer side, which means it's gonna eventually look like this. But to sew this all up, you're gonna wanna make sure that this zipper is open. And you're gonna put right sides together. That means the right sides of the front, right sides of the front, just like this. And for me, it works out best if I just do around the side and down on the outer pieces first. And outer pieces first. And that has the little wheel in it. You have this little wheel. And it does show it on the liner, but I, I just actually cut mine off because I really don't need that liner to have that. And then when you're done doing this side, you're going to then you know, cut your strings and then go over and do the other side, only you're only gonna do, you're only going to sew down along this side and down along this side. And I come in about an inch on each side there, so I have this opening. And that's where, when this is all sewn up, we can flip it all inside out you can then top stitch this liner and stuff it down in inside of the bag. Now, when you do this, you want to make sure that your outer part has your handle. So that little part that we made first, this part is going to be laid on the inside, wherever you want it. I usually would put it where the zipper ends the very beginning of the zipper. I'll probably put it somewhere about an inch down or so, right near right near that zipper there. I'll bet it'll be on the inside. So it would be like this, with the raw edges of it sticking out. So that way, when you turn it inside out, it will be where it's supposed to be. If you've done zippers and stuff like that before, then that'll be really simple for you to do. If not, I leave instructions on my blog on how to do all my zipper pouches, and they're all done basically the same, whether they're um, a square zipper pouch or they're the glamping camping zipper pouch. I, I use the same technique on everything. I have that on my blog. The, the, there's the main page, and then you can up at the top or on your computer, it might be on one of the sidebars, where then it has pages. And that'll have every single cut and sew that I make and how to make it with some visuals, either photos and video or, or both. And I try to explain how to do it. There's uh, you know, a lot of ways of doing things. If you're a sewer, there's different techniques to do different things. And if you uh, are really good at sewing, then it'll be really easy. And if you're a beginner sewer, it's really not too hard. The zipper part is, is the hardest part. Um, once you know how to do zippers, though, then it's pretty easy. I don't use a zipper part, uh, a, a foot, a zipper foot. I just use my regular thing, and just, it works fine for me. But for a lot of things, it's probably better to use the zipper foot, it, depending on what technique you have. So anyway, I'll finish this up, and then I'll show you not only this one, but maybe some others, a little short video on um, some of the other bags that, that I've done. Okay, I have sewn around the complete both sides. I've got the liner now ready. So you can see when I folded it all out, this is the liner, and this is the area that we will fold under and top stitch. So I'm just gonna take that. You can see how it just kind of folds under itself when you do that one inch on each side. And then you just kind of press that with your fingers, or you can go over to the iron and then top stitch along there. And then you will have both these sides, excuse me. <coughs> and then here's the little tie that I was telling you about. Remember, it's got to be right laying right sides together in here. And the other ends is, are inside of the bag now. So they're not seen. It's a nice little hand thing. So I will go ahead and do this. And top stitch this. And then this little bag is done. And then I'll show you the bags. I'll show you this one and some more laying out on on the on the bed or I'll just show you some that are hanging up and you'll get more ideas of some of the things that I have 
and then you're done. It's an e easy little fast project. Once you learn the, the zipper thing and, and working with different fabrics, I, again, think this frays way too much for, for me because I like this to be like a 30 minute, 45 minute project for sewing. And then it's great for taking to craft shows and selling your original piece. And I mean, nobody else is going to have this design because they're only available on my site on the fat quarter cut and soles. You can make your own uh, cut and shape, but you won't have that design. Anyway, thanks for watching and, and be sure and watch till the end. Okay, the last video. This is the one that we just did. It's the gold tone, kind of flapper girl times, you know, how that ritzy ritz little bag. We have the zipper. I showed you how to do that. And here's some that I have not shown you, but they are on the site, plus a whole lot more patterns. But you can see, I this is just a small sample of what I have left here at my house. But I make these little bags. This one here is just a, a Velcro one. I, I put a little snap on it, and this is so like a little organizer wallet. You put little, your extra pockets, however you wanted to do it, just mix and match. It, it has the, these are all my designs. So the, the design here is not commercial fabrics. These are my, my own designs. These are the, the biggest seller is the fishing lures, and this one's a large, fishing bag and then here's a little snap-on bag so it snaps on both sides a great for putting lures in there if you're going fishing you can have a gift for a man or a fishing lady that likes to fish my daughter loves to fish and here's one i just put a little velcro and make it look like that but it's just a little snap-on bag again again the snaps on both sides this is one of, another one of the camper bags that was made. It can be made into a hot pad or it can be made into the zipper. And this is, again, one of the kits, one fat quarter. All of these are one fat quarter. The chicken one is real popular for all of those country people who like chickens. And this one here has a little fairy riding a bird. And again, a Velcro on this one. This one I put a custom made ceramic accent. It has a pocket here and it's a zipper bag inside with the mushrooms all over it. This is a country woman. Again, a, a little snap on bag, just one snap on this one. I made this with Velcro also. I mean, it's got all this little country scene here with the sheep and the cows little cottage and the large pot holder or zipper bag this one's a zipper bag as well you can see this size compared to this one here again you have your little louvers anyway check them out they're on spoonflower you look underneath collections and then do it yourself cut and sew and i have a lot of them done now i've been working on it for a number of years now to get this collection all done they're great to make for gifts they're great for selling at craft shows maybe you need to make a few extra bucks now in this time where we need extra income this might be something you could look into and again it'll give you an edge because these patterns this fabric these designs are only sold on my spoonflower site i do not have any kind of commercial tie-in with any companies it the money that i make off of that which i get 10 percent of the sales and that goes strictly to help my husband and i in our retirement thanks for watching give me a thumbs up if you like it and give me a comment if you have any questions or comments Thank you.